Welcome back to The Appointment. I've been speaking with the Managing Director and CEO of IDFC Bank, Mr. Rajiv Lal. Well, with that, let me come to uh, the uh, issue of the banking system itself mm. and to your bank. Mm. Uh, your, uh, uh, you know, uh, you have chosen the path of growing your deposits uh, through technology rather than through branches. Mm. Uh, can you give me an idea of what might be the deposit at the end of one year, your retail deposits? current and savings plus fixed uh, I, term loans. I cannot, Any target you're working I cannot towards. predict that at all. I have zero visibility right now. Um, I have only theoretical targets. Um, uh, so, uh, but we will know better. Uh, we should have a conversation eight, nine months from now. Mm -hmm. and I'll be in a much better position to share with you our experience. Mm -hmm. um, I think the, the first task for us is to, um, is to connect um, with the customer mm -hmm. um, in the main urban centers of the country, which is where the bulk of um, household uh, and corporate savings for that matter reside. Mm -hmm. um, we are actually more confident uh, uh, about getting our fair share of corporate savings mm -hmm. uh, than we can be, um, objectively speaking, today about the speed at which we will uh, get our share of household savings okay. um, in the urban centers. But what we do know mm -hmm. and what we are in a medium term sense pretty confident about is that the value proposition that we will sequentially um, over the next several months uh, unveil in the market um, should be attractive and powerful enough mm -hmm. that uh, it, it will provide us uh, a connect um, with a core group of, group mm -hmm. of customers um, and that uh, once that stabilizes um, and we are confident mm -hmm. that that value proposition is catching um, then we will accelerate the pace uh, of, of, of acquisition. But that core corporate uh, clientele that you have would already be banking with somebody because they are all large corporates. Of course. So you would still be able to get, uh, d uh, you know, deposit banking business from them? Yes. I, you know, see, so uh, uh, people t can tend to forget that uh, banking at the end of the day is a service. Mm. Um, and customers, like in many other consumer facing, all consumer facing businesses, yes. they respond to service. Yes. So, if our relationship and our service proposition is indeed compelling, mm -hmm. um, uh, there's no reason why uh, they will not at least uh, indulge us with some share of the business okay. they are currently. Um, conducting with other banks. Okay, but uh, let me come to the household uh, yeah. piece. You said that you would you will have more clarity eight to nine months down the line. Mm. But eight to nine months down the line, the first of the payment banks will also be yeah. uh, will have been rolled out. Yeah. And the pace with which Paytm is uh, captured yes. the pay, uh, the yeah. payments transaction yeah. uh, does it uh, give you a feeling that that's going to be a very difficult piece? You will have the ideas, the Airtels, mm. uh, all of them backed by their own NBFCs yep. selling loans. Yep. So, uh, so is I the problem more difficult than what you thought eighteen months back? No, I'm not sure it's more difficult. We knew all this was uh, was going to. Was Did going you to know 21 licenses? No, that's true. But um, we had a pretty good sense that payment bank licenses would happen. Uh, I think those of us who were focused on it had examined the space. Um, uh, were not surprised that these licenses went to telecom companies. Mm. I think that yes. makes good sense. Um, uh, there's a method to why that happened. So that was that was expected. Um, I think when we were conceptualizing the bank, we knew that uh, it's only a matter of time. Mm. Uh, that uh, and not too much time mm. that there would be mm. a, a confluence of telecoms and, and financial services and technology and financial services more generally. Mm -hmm. So we, we are we are strategically we are we are prepared for that. So I think we will. Uh, there's no doubt that uh, there's going to be more competition, mm. um, and that is why uh, uh, we are uh, quite clear that uh, we will not compete mm -hmm. um, on the same basis as the previous generation of banks, we will actually have to be more uh, payment bank-like. Mm. Uh, we will have to be more telco-like mm. 
um, uh, in how we present ourselves uh, to the market. Mm -hmm. um, so it'll be a very interesting journey. Won't that we? may be challenging, isn't it? Because Telenor doesn't have the same reach as uh, uh, Idea and Airtel, yeah. uh, uh, and uh, uh, will not therefore that be a challenge? Uh, so I mean, their access to customers yeah. is easier. SBI has one kind of reach, yeah. and with Rail Geo will have uh, you know its own. Uh, uh, access yeah. uh, and technology and uh, idea and Airtel will have their kind of reach. Uh, would you not find yourself uh, uh, in in an extremely competitive environment? I'm not sure about that. I don't uh, think uh, that's the case because they cannot uh, uh, see the payments bank is a very sort of narrow construct actually. Yes. What they can do, cannot do um, is very narrowly prescribed. So, uh, uh, the way I see it is that the payments banks are going to uh, eat into uh, a certain segment of the banking revenue pool. Mm -hmm. um, so, anything that is to do with delivering transactional convenience. So, let's say the remittance business, yes. right? Uh, the payments banks are really going Maybe to... Maybe even the credit card business. So, yeah, so there are two things. One is the, uh, uh, so it's, they're related, right? When I say transactional convenience, what it means is that the expectation is that, don't know exactly over what period of time, but the dependence of cash in the economy will come down, right? So, uh, uh, whatever uh, banks were able to earn because of those inefficiencies, that revenue pool, so whether it's checks, yes. Um, drafts, uh, drafts uh, uh, you know, remittances, yes. ATMs, cash in, cash out, all those kinds of things mm -hmm. will be under competitive pressure. For us, uh, today we have zero revenues from any of that. <laughs> so, we only have upside. Right. We have no... We have no, we have no downside. Okay. Uh, I wanted to take you up on one more thing uh, that you told my colleague Ritu Singh earlier, yeah. uh, that you are not going to have too many branches because yeah. your model is different. Yeah. Now, uh, around the same time, mm. uh, Development Credit Bank actually mm. said they are going to increase their branches. Right. Now, they have been there, done that, right. and they think branches are needed not really for liability, but mm. actually for asset creation, that you need to be close to the uh, MSME and the SME mm. if you want to give loans. Mm. Won't you find that need to give loans to an SME sector or an MSME sector? They are welcome to the brave new world. I, know, I think uh, you don't think you will uh, want no, to change so that, your. So we, look, it, it's, it, we are not going to be just a digital bank. Mm -hmm. Let's be clear about that. But we are going to be uh, a cake and mortar bank. Yes. Uh, what is clear is that the the mortar we invest in will be significantly less than the mortar of existing banks. Um, uh, that said. Uh, I don't know if other people are, I am absolutely convinced that over the next five years, our financial system is going to see very, very dramatic change, right? Uh, and what are those changes? The first is that uh, uh, the speed with which public sector banks are going to lose market share is going to be accelerated. Mm -hmm. Right? There will be some consolidation, it will settle down eventually, but there is for the next five years a big opportunity for private banks, old and new, uh, to take market share from public sector banks. So that's one thing that's going to happen. The infrastructure for interface with customers to deliver them access to financial services is going to grow dramatically thanks to the payments banks. Uh, so the geos of this world, the Paytms of this world, Telenors ourselves, uh, you know, all of us are going to invest in this infrastructure. Then with the NPCI payments yes. backbone, it's going to be dramatic uh, improvement in convenience for the customer. This will put pressure on margins of various kinds yes. uh, for the banks, right? Um, third thing that is going to happen is there's going to be an explosion of data of available information Analytics. on customers. So analytics, one has to think very imaginative, you know, five years from now, analytics-based lending. Already there are so many NBFCs that are mushrooming left, right, and center. Uh, that, are, uh, that are going to be specializing on analytics-based lending. This is the future, right? So in a future like that, uh, a new bank has to think very differently and very nimbly, my view. Therefore, um, you know, we have to invest very heavily in data. 
um, um, and uh, our handicap is we don't have customers on which to do analytics. So we have strategies and various other uh, plans to get up that curve as quickly as we can uh, and figure out how we position ourselves um, um, in that in that future. So it's, it's, it's a brave new world, but it's a very exciting world that will unfold in the next five years. If you were not an IDFC uh, bank MD, mm. if you were only an observer of the scene, mm. would you say that all banks, uh, uh, the, the big guys today, even the ICICIs, mm. the accesses, HDFCs, SBIs, mm. will all see an erosion of margins? Yes, undoubtedly. This is happening the world over, right? ROEs in banking are shrinking. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, if you go to Europe and the US, everybody says banking is a terrible business. Mm -hmm. um, and that, that's the other reasons for that. They have a huge regulatory overhang, which fortunately we don't. Mm -hmm. um, our market is still growing much, much faster. Um, but uh, yes, there will be greater competition. Margins will be under pressure for everybody. Uh, more people will be competing for the same liabilities. And there will be different axes of differentiation now that people will have to develop, bankers will have to develop to uh, make themselves relevant um, and attractive to a rapidly changing customer base. Okay. Okay. Uh, you have promised me a, a, an assessment interview eight to nine months yes, down the line. Done. Give me some numbers by which you will uh, measure yourself. What kind of an ROE? 12 months from now, so, what yeah. kind of a cost to income ratio right. 12 months from now, even if they are at the moment only visionary. Right. So, I, uh, the only numbers I'm sharing right now, and they will become more granular as we keep doing these uh, conversations, uh, but the numbers I'm sharing right now is that for March, for this financial year, uh, we expect to deliver profits after tax of 1,000 crores. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, which would be uh, ROE, uh, which would be uh, our trough ROE, let's call it that, at around 8%. Okay. Um, thereafter, we feel um, pretty confident that year on year, um, for the next five years, um, 10 to 15% growth in profits after tax is very much achievable. Um, when it comes to cost to income ratios, uh, uh, they'll be very highly distorted um, up front because the income will be very low, the cost structure very high, so it won't really be reflective of where we want no, to go. That's why I asked you 12 but months or 24 even, months? Even 12, 12 months will be. This is a five-year journey. Okay. So at the end of the fifth year, we should be coming to cost-to-income ratios um, that look uh, uh, different and, you know, and, and, and should give uh, people who are tracking us um, the confidence that, look, if these guys continue the way they are, then they will deliver a, a sustainable long-term cost-to-income ratio that will be significantly lower than industry. Okay. But that's a journey, mm -hmm. um, and uh, I don't want to, and five years is a long time, yes. so <laughs> I, I don't want to make any brash, okay. rash statements. No, let me ask you from an industry standpoint, form, since, yeah. I mean, you have, you're, you know, you've seen the entire spectrum of finance yeah. uh, and economics, mm -hmm. that's why I'm asking you. Uh, give me a guess as to 24 months down the line, mm. uh, what will be the share of the public sector banks uh, oh. in the total piece? Right. And also 24 months down the line, uh, you know, we actually 45 legacy banks plus 21 new banks, mm. we should be 66, all of you put together. Mm. How many will you all be 24 months down the line? How many banks Entities, will there be? yes. Banking entities. I haven't thought about that. No, I, mean, I assume I mean, there'll be a lot of consolidation. Yeah. So, uh, consolidation is very unpredictable because it's as okay. much a political okay. and cultural process as anything else. I mean, okay, then the first question. So, first question, I think that uh, it's taken us 30 years for uh, the share of public sector banks to come from 99% to 70 Seven. odd. Um, I think in the next 5 to 7 years, they'll be down to 50%. Okay, that's very interesting. I mean, that <laughs> definitely changes uh, yes. uh, the texture. Yes, that's of my idea. belief. Okay. Let's see what happens. All right. Uh, we'll, we'll hold you to as many numbers as possible. <laughs> Thank you very Thank much. Thank you. Mr.